Hello YouTubers. Today we are doing a video about pattern versus velocity. Now this one's aimed at, uh, no pun intended, duck and goose hunters out there using steel shot. There's always a lot of hype about velocity and a lot of people jumping on the velocity bandwagon. We got shells you can buy now that are upwards of 1,700 feet per second right off the store shelf. But there's always been a concept that at the higher velocity, you could blow your shot, so to speak. In other words, ruin your pattern. So I'm about to demonstrate exactly what happens when you increase velocity. So I hand loaded five shot shells with varying velocity and you will see how they pattern. Uh, we're keeping the pattern down, keeping the distance down to under 25 yards so we can keep most of the pattern on the paper. So here we go. You always wear hearing protection. Okay, as you can see, this first one's extremely slow, which is what I intended. Only 894 feet per second. The pattern looks very good. But, if you were downrange very far, you probably couldn't kill much with it. Now for this test, I have decided to use my Stoger P350 pump. It's an inexpensive gun in 12 gauge, but it kills birds just fine. And the choke I'm using is a Carlson's mid-range waterfowl tube, which is to say it's modified is what it is. 705 thousandths. And, uh, anyway, um, I'm using steel shot because steel shot is more affected by this than anything else. Lead shot's also affected, but it will squish. In other words, it will give. So it's a whole different animal on the ballistics. Okay, this second shot should be. Uh, somewhat faster and we'll see if the pattern is affected at all. That one was still really slow, 896. And in here, is about, that's actually a little bigger for some weird reason. Now part of this pattern may go a little bit from left to right because I've got a wind that is steadily increasing as I do this test. So bear with me. considerably louder. We'll see what it looks like. 
1,536. Oh, now look at this. This pattern is much more widespread. Much more widespread. And we're not counting the number of pellets because on these shells, as I went up in gunpowder, I had to decrease the load. So what we're looking at is the overall spread of the pattern and how evenly dispersed it is. Eighteen forty six. That's a fast shell. And a crappy pattern. Oh, if this was a large duck or a goose, you could hit it. Uh, if it was something small, probably couldn't. But we are using large pellets, so if there was a goose right here. All you need is one to two hits in the vitals to kill a goose. If it's in the right spot, one or two will do it. But as you notice, the pattern is much more widespread. That one sounded considerably louder. Eighteen hundred and eighty-five feet per second. That's screaming for a shotgun shell. And this pattern is crap. Just like a lot of the pellets hit clear off the paper. And all these shells use the same case. Federal two and three quarter inch. And the slower ones were heavier loads, one ounce loads. And the faster, not the faster two were uh, five eighths I think. Yeah, five eighths. Small loads. Not much bigger than a four ten. Uh, if you hit something with it, you know, it's pretty fast. So, to summarize, it is obvious to me, and it should be to you, that as, increase, as velocity increases, after a certain point, the pattern degrades. And much of that is because as the shell discharges and the pellets go up, they go through the forcing cone and then they stay to the bore size until they get to the choke. Well, then they got to neck down. Now lead will give, but steel won't. It tends to bounce around. It holds that energy. But the faster it's got to neck down, uh, the less reliable it is to give you a good pattern. Now, those of you shooting uh, Pattern Master or Wad Wizard type chokes, they have a Wad Stopper. There are some other brands too that have one. This whole test doesn't really apply because, um, for one thing, they are not as constricted as far as the size goes, and they are not designed for high velocity shells. Uh, I spoke with people at Wad Wizard and they said that 1500 maybe 1550 is about the max you should run through there because it's got the little tab inside that temporarily stops the wad to separate the shot from it and uh, they don't work too good if you run it through there too fast you know, this test is mostly for your basic constrictive choke and 
results probably would have been worse with a flush mounted choke. This is actually a good choke. It actually patterns much better than the ones that came with the gun. So you can just imagine how poorly it would have patterned at high velocity with the uh, manufacturer's choke. Again, let's take a look at these results. Okay, 894.4 feet per second. Nice tight pattern. Very good pattern. For something like a quail, this would probably work. Two. Whereas a couple more feet per second. Not quite as good a pattern. Part of that might have been might have been, been the wind blowing. It's highly possible. And three. Fifteen thirty six. This is a, this is where you see a marked change. Eighteen forty six. Eighteen eighty five. He had the worst pattern of all. One of the reasons why this test was really important is, is this. Okay, everyone thinks, okay, well, you know, the uh, pattern's not as good, but if I hit a bird with that, it's gonna kill it right off. Well, yeah, it probably will, but um, it helps to have at least some kind of pattern that's relatively evenly dispersed. Uh, I shot a pheasant with a shell like this once that probably had a velocity close to 1700 and uh, shell hit it in its backside and went clear through the shoulder all the way through the bird. So it's pretty impressive. But the, it was only about 30 yards away. Now here's the thing about pellets, okay, round shapes. The aerodynamic of balls is this. As you increase the speed out of the muzzle, the air resistance increases dramatically. And even though they're going out faster, they'll slow down faster. If you want to test the theory about um, circular objects slowing down faster at higher speed, uh, inflate a balloon and tap it across the room slowly first and then hit it hard and watch how when you hit it hard it slows down faster so yeah say 20 30 yards might make a pretty good difference but you get out there 40 50 60 yards and you will because on the prairie ducks and geese are further away than they look oftentimes and what happens is by the time it gets past 40 yards, a lot of the increase is gone. You might only have 40 or 50 more feet per second. Now that might be enough. It might just happen to be enough. You never know. And if you look at some of my other videos, um, a lot of the shells I used with my over and under 10 gauge for killing geese had a velocity under 1400 feet per second. And I kill geese from extreme long range. Now some of the videos I did with my 10 gauge pump had shells that have velocity about 1600, 1650 and they also kill geese fine. The difference is there were a lot less pellets in the bird. Um, so if you didn't hit them directly, if you didn't hit them square, you didn't get them. Uh, Personally, I prefer a large load, and I know according to Ballistic Products, uh, in their Status of Steel book, which is an excellent book, 
uh, they say, well, patterns don't kill birds, pellets kill birds, and that's true. It's kind of like a drag race. So you got two pellets side by side. One of them leaves the barrel at 1700, and the other one leaves it, say, 1350. At the end of, say, 50 yards, they're going close to the same speed, but the 1700 is going to get there early. So, what that is to say is that a major advantage to the higher velocity shells is it cuts your lead distance way down. If you're having trouble, if you're missing birds or hitting the back part of them and crippling them, you might want to change it up and go to a higher velocity shell. If you look at some of my videos uh, with the slower shells, some of those geese I led by as much as, say, 9, 10 feet, they still kill them just the same. So it's up to you on what you want to do. But you should at least uh, pattern test your shells, see what you got. Just because the pattern doesn't look good doesn't mean you can't kill birds. I recorded this video because I didn't see any like it on YouTube and I think it's important for people to have a, a good understanding of how velocity and pattern works. Even though these weren't manufactured shells, uh, the bulk of manufactured shells are loaded the same way with the same type of wad. Now, special shells like Hex Shot and Black Cloud, those are different and I didn't test those. So I can't really elaborate on the results of those. But if you want to cut your lead down, you should go to a higher velocity. But if you want a much better pattern, shoot something that's say 1400, something like that. No more than about 1550. That's what I recommend, personally. But you find something that works, stick with it. Find a choke that works, stick with that. Anyway, I, I used BBs because large steel shot gives the choke the biggest challenge. If you're using something small, like five shot or six shot, something like that, uh, a lot of those gaps will be filled in. It'll pattern a lot better. But for geese and large ducks, you need the bigger shot. And I felt that with using BBs, it would be uh, would further demonstrate or demonstrate much better the effect that velocity has on pattern. So I hope you got something out of this, and thank you for your time, and please subscribe to my channel.